Hi, this is Amelia from Loom with M, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this crazy crisscross bracelet. Um, I have one in black and another one in white. You can use as many colors as you want, and I think it looks crazily awesome. Now let's get started. Band requirements. You're going to need 27 A colored bands for your border and 34 B colored bands for the crisscrosses on the inside. You can use as many colors as you want, but the total is 34. I'm going to be using six colors, so I'm going to need five of the first four colors and, or sorry, six of these colors and only five of these colors because my pattern doesn't repeat. Well, it doesn't repeat all the way. Um, during this tutorial, I am going to be using this template just to help me. And I will try to post it as soon as possible so you can see it. But first, I'm just going to let you take a look at it. And this pattern is a little unique because we're going to loop the border first and then loop our insides. So our first layer is us placing the colors, and then the next layer will be the border. And I found it helpful to write out all my colors, or like put out colored bands, so that you remember your color order, and I suggest that you do that too. And during this video, I'm also going to be experimenting with using buttons. And I'm going to show you how to make a cap band with a button and a rubber band. Um, these buttons have a shank back, if you can see. Just means there's like a loop on the back. Um, you can use normal buttons. I just find it a lot easier to use buttons with a shank back. For this design, you're going to need your loom and a hook and all your rubber bands. Um, I'm going to start by placing here, I need to move these bands by placing a single rubber band of your inside color forward. And then we're going to place the next two colors out to the left and then out to the right. And then the next color, again, goes forward. Then the next color out to the left and then out to the right and push them down. And we continue repeating this pattern until the end. I'm going to show you again. First color, forward, out to the left, and out to the right, forward, out to the left, and out to the right. Now on my bracelet, since I use six colors, I always have these ones going out. So what I can do is I can mix up my pattern to make that different. For example, placing a pink here, and then a green goes out, because green is my next color, and then a blue goes out on the other side, and then a purple goes forward. So you can mess up your pattern if you want to, just that way you get different colors on the outside. And now it's the same pattern again, so I'm going to use a green to go forward, then a blue out, going back to that other pattern, purple out, and then an orange forward, yellow out to the other side, and then a pink out. So just kind of letting you know that you can definitely mess up your pattern to try to make it look a little better or you can just continue with leaving it the same and depending on the amount of colors you use your pattern will be different out out now since I messed up my pattern I have to hope that I have the right amount of bands here I'm going to use green here just because I want to and then pink forward 
So you really can put them in any order and I think it just makes it look even crazier, which is pretty neat. But of course, if you want to stick to your pattern, go for it. And I have three bands left. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna put one forward. And there you go. So there you should have your whole loom with this pattern. Now we need to place our border bands. It's just a simple border, and if, you can, if you've done this before, you can skip ahead of me. We're gonna place a band out to the left, and then out to the right, and now we need to go up the loom on both sides. So you just place single bands, one after another, on the outside. And for your last band, we go into the center. And now we need to do this on the other side. Just place single bands all the way up the loom. And make sure they're on top of your colored bands. Sorry, I forgot to say that. And for your last band, we're gonna curve it into the center. And on this last pin, we need to place a doubled over cap band. Okay, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it with a button. So we're gonna take our button. Um, a shank back would be helpful, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it with a normal button. And we're gonna take craft wire I have my craft wire, and we're going to thread this single band onto half of the craft wire so that it sits at the end. And now we're going to take both of these um, open ends and stick them both through this shank back opening. And then we're going to pull the rubber band through. And now I'm going to hold my thumb on this end as I slide out my craft wire so it doesn't come off. And then these two loops are going to make our cap band. Like that. And then we can take our loom and place these two loops on that last pin. And we can always rotate our button around. And that's going to create a cute little button versus just using a C-clip at the end. Um, we're gonna loop our last bands around this flower button and it just creates a cute look. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with a normal button. So I'm gonna leave this because this is gonna be my button. And I find normal buttons um, more difficult. I'm just gonna use this yellow band so you can see it. And I have a piece of semi-bent craft wire and I think that helps with threading a normal button. So we're gonna poke it on half of it and put it to the center. And then we're gonna thread both loops through the back side of one of the buttonholes and pull the rubber band up. Now just make sure you're always holding onto this end so it doesn't slip off. And then we need to poke these two ends through the other hole of the button. And if you have a four hold button, you can either go both directions and have two cap bands or just go diagonally across the four holes. But I thought a two hold button would be easier. And then you remove your craft wire and these two ends, we're gonna stretch them out and put them on that last peg of our loom. You just stretch them across. Here, mine doesn't want to do it. There we go. And then you can rotate the button around. Now for mine, I want to use this flowered button. So I'm going to stretch it on and then rotate it around. And now we can start to loop. Let me zoom out so you can see a little better. 
we're going to turn our loom around and just like a normal cap band um, we just kind of can pull back this button and grab these border bands and loop them forward. And so you can just push the button back with your thumb like that. And then we're going to do it to the other side. And right now we're going to leave this colored band here. And we're going to loop our whole entire border except for these last two. So just pull back the rubber bands on top and grab the bo the black border band and loop it forward and we're not touching the bands underneath. Just don't let them get caught in this looping. Just we're just looping the border bands forward, only border bands. And just just loop them straight forward. And once we get to here, we're going to loop this band forward, but don't loop these bands forward yet. And now we need to go back to the other side and do the same exact thing. Just grab just the top border band and loop it forward. And again, same on this side, we're going to loop this band forward, but don't touch these other two bands. And for my border, I put this underneath because it was part of layer one, but then I'll put this, this colorful band on the outside. So something you can do if you want this on the inside like me, we can lift off these two bands and then lift off this one. And I'm just going to, what I like to do is have them take a vacation. So I'm just going to stretch it onto a random pin just so it's out of my way. And then put these, oh, that's not this one first, this one first. Put these border bands back on. And then we can put this colorful band back on its pin. So that just um, put the colored band on top of the border bands if you like to do it that way. But it's fine the other way too. So now we need to loop... Um, our colors and it's pretty simple you just loop them in order so we're gonna pull back our cap band and loop this colored band forward and then we're going to go into the left side you could go into the right but I prefer left and loop it forward oops oh I dropped a band I'm gonna show you how to fix it just grab the band and then carefully place it back on the pin and now we're going to go into the right side and loop this one forward. I think this band, this bracelet design is unique because we're like looping the colored bands onto the border bands. We're not looping the border band last. And I'm going to show you what we do next. So we're going to pull back all of these bands that we previously looped and grab for that last bottom unlooped band and just loop it forward. And then we're going to grab from the left to the center, push it down so we have more room, right to the center. And now go through all those bands that you've looped and grab that orange band and loop it forward. And we just continue doing this pattern all the way down, right to the center, left, left to the center, right to the center, and pull back all those bands, make sure you don't catch any of them, and just get that bottom band. And then we go again, left right, dig down through all of them, and loop that forward. And just be careful, it's not very tight, but it might be a little tight in here. Just kind of be, use caution when you're pulling in this like last band here. Make sure you get around the pin and stretch it forward. And we just need to do this all the way down our loom.
I just dropped a band, so I'm just gonna fix it again, pull it underneath, make sure it catches that border band, and put it back on. And then loop the right one, and for the last one, we're gonna dig down and loop it forward. Now we just need to loop these two border bands in. It doesn't matter which order you do it, but I like the left first, and then the right. And that is gonna finish our bracelet, and we need one we just need to finish it. Um, we need one more band and then we're gonna stick our hook down the channel and poke it out to the side. Grab one rubber band, pull it back up and through and put the other end on your hook. And now we can rip this bracelet off the loom. You can use your hook or your fingers. I think this one's easier just to use your fingers and pull it off. And just kinda be careful you don't rip the bands gets a little bit tight on the center. And there you have it. It's our finished bracelet with your button attached to the end. And now I can show you how to extend it. You can extend it on your loom, but today I'm going to show you how to extend it on your hook. Um, I have seven bands for my extension because that's how long I like to make my extension. You might want to make it a different number though. And for my starburst, I showed how to make it on the loom, so today I'm going to show it on the hook. We're going to take our first color and loop it through that finishing, um, finishing band and then put the other end back on our hook. And then we're going to take our next color and loop it through, put the end back on our hook next color, bring it through, other end back on your hook, and then our next color, wait hold on, I don't want to put purple, let's put green. And we're just going to keep chaining until your extension is as long as you want. And then purple, and then I'm going to use black. And now all you need to do is you can attach your C-clip to the end cap pin if you use the C-clip or if you have a button we can just take this off your hook but make sure you're holding on to it stretch it out and stretch the end over the button and it should hold because now it's locked into the button and if you want to undo this you would just need to take this and put it back over the button and then you have your end one more time. You just want to take this finished loop and stretch it over the button and just make sure it's all stretched and then it should snap underneath the button. And then you have a cute little button on your bracelet and I just think it looks so adorable. And there you have it. There is your finished crazy crisscross bracelet.